Hello all, welcome to session 7 of Selenium 4 training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate different topics in Java, that is methods, variables, classes, objects, constructors, this keyword, overloading, inheritance, and finally, overriding. So let's get started. First of all, I'll explain about methods. What exactly are these methods? In Java programming, the programming logic needs to be written inside methods, okay? If you have to write some programming logic in Java programming, we have to write that programming logic inside methods. If you can see this diagram here, okay, we have created a lot of Java files so far, right? In each and every Java file, we created a class. Inside that class, there are two types of things possible. That is variables and methods, okay? There are two properties that we generally create inside a class that are nothing but variables and methods. The purpose of the variables is to store the data, but the purpose of the methods is to write the programming logic, okay? If you want to write the programming logic in Java, inside this class, inside the methods, we generally write the programming logic. Whereas coming to the variables, we create the variables to store the data, in Java programming, okay? Now, let's understand about the main method, okay? Till now guys, till the previous sessions, whatever the method I have created is nothing but the main method, okay? So in Java, main method is one of the methods, okay? In main method also, we can write the programming logic, but the importance of the main method in Java is that the program execution starts in Java from the main method only. As already explained in the previous sessions in Java, the programming execution starts from a method known as main method, okay? So now, apart from main method, guys, we can create different type of methods, okay? Main method is not the only method that is available in Java. Along with main method, we can create a lot of methods inside this class, guys, okay? But main method is a method where the program execution generally starts. Now, let me demonstrate few examples for you to understand the methods in a better way. Okay, now let's create multiple methods, guys. Okay, let's create multiple methods. Fine, creating multiple methods along with the main method. Okay, for that, I'll create a new class, guys. Okay, new Java file or Java class, I'll say, and I'll say demo. Okay, demo uh, here one, two, three are done. I'll take four, guys. Okay, I'll take four. Demo four class, I'll take inside this demo four. Okay, uh, I will create a main method first. Okay, I'll create the main method. How to create the main method, guys? Simple terms, I have to type main and just press enter. The main method will be created. This is a main method, right? The program execution in Java starts from this main method. Here I can write the programming logic if I want, okay? This is also a method. Inside any method in the Java programming, I can write the programming logic, okay? So I created a main method, guys. Now what I want to do is, apart from main methods, I can create few more methods, okay? Similar to main method, I can create few more methods which are not main methods, but I can create multiple methods inside a single class. I can create multiple methods, okay? So, yeah. Here I'll create public, okay? So whatever the methods I am trying to create, uh, I'll make sure that they look similar to main method, but the name of the method will be different, guys, okay? But the name of the method will be different. That's what I am trying to do. Here, this is the main method, but uh, few more methods I'll create which look similar to the main method, but the name of the method will be different from the main method, okay? So here I'll say uh, method one, okay? Like this, I'll create one method. The name of the method is method one. Now I'll create one more method. So public static wide, I'll repeat here for this method, public static wide. I'll say name of the method I'll give as any name you can give. I'm just giving method two as a name. Here guys, uh, there's one thing that you need to understand, right? Here, main method is having how many words? Only one word. So it is looking like this, right? Single word. All the letters of this single word are in lowercase. But if a particular method has multiple words, more than one word, in that case, which naming convention we have to follow? As, as you have remembered right in the previous sessions I mentioned, when you create the projects, here we have followed the upper camel case for the for naming the project name, right? And also while creating the class also, these class names are following a convention, naming convention known as upper camel case. But what about methods case? 
which convention they follow these methods follow the lower camel case that means if this particular method has multiple words the first word will be completely lower case whereas from second word onwards the first letter of the second word onwards okay it will be capital okay it if it has one more word let's say method one okay demo or something is there okay here multi three words are there right in this method name we have three words starting from the second word the first letter will be capital the third word also the first letter is capital this is what is called as a lower camel case guys okay this is what is a lower camel case so we generally follow the lower camel case naming convention while naming the methods okay fine anyhow i created uh, two more methods here i can create one more method if i want public static void method three for now blindly write all these keywords guys okay so you don't have to understand what is public static void for now just blindly write the keywords okay for now done so now what i will do is i will use the main method to call other methods okay so here this is what is main method right here i'll write a print statement first of all out write print statement s out press tab key okay this is shortcut so here i'll say inside main method okay i'll write one sample line of code inside the main method and after that after this okay if i run this code guys okay after this if i run this code what will happen guys here also i'll write some print statements s out method inside the method one inside method one method here also s out inside method two method here also one print statement i'll write s out inside method three method like this three methods three extra methods apart from the main method i created inside the same class now this particular demo for class has how many methods first method is main method second method is method one third uh, third method is method two fourth method is method three okay here four methods are there right four methods are there one of them is main method remaining or non main methods fine guys now here as you can see in each and every of this method that is main method method one method two and method three okay there is one 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 print statement available okay if i run this code if i run this file okay if i run this demo for will all these print statements in each and every method will be printed the answer is no guys okay you'll see that now so all the other methods will not be executed guys only main method will be executed i'll tell you the reason okay now i am running so let's see the results only one method will be executed that is main method guys okay only inside main method got printed you see only the print statement that is there inside the main method got printed coming to the other methods like method 1 method 2 method 3 they didn't get executed you see the print statement inside the method 1 that is inside method 1 method didn't get printed inside method 2 method also didn't get printed inside method 3 method also didn't get printed what is the reason for this okay why only main method got executed here as you already know okay in java the execution will start from which method main method so the main met method will be executed first so we will go inside the main method and uh, one of the print statement that is, that is there inside the main method got executed and we got this inside main method printed in the output after that the main method has ended that's it this is just ending of the program guys okay is anywhere this main method is connected to the method 1 method 2 method 3 no right there are other methods there is no connection between this main method and this methods that's why the code inside this method 1 method 2 method 3 didn't get executed so what i have to do if i have to uh run this code that is also there in other methods in that case guys with the help of the main method okay for inside the from inside the main method i need to call this method how to call the method without you call this method this methods will not be executed guys okay only by default main method will be executed uh, because the starting point of the execution of uh, programs in java is a main method and that main method will execute and it will be completed that's it okay other methods won't be executed if you still want other methods to be executed since you know that the control will go to the main method and uh, after this statement got executed if you still want this methods to be executed then you need to call this methods whatever the methods you want to run you need to call them from the main method okay for example here method 1 i want to call simply so there is simple process guys copy paste otherwise okay give the name of the method followed by circular brackets and put a semicolon that's it this is called as method calling statement 
okay what is this guys method calling statement so this statement is going to call the method guys okay now if i run this code if i run this program this time what will happen first inside main method will be printed after that method one will be called so control will go from here to here the control will go from here to here and after that inside method one method will be executed and printed in the output after that method one will be done again the control will come back here guys okay the control will come back to the original main method after this statement if there are any other statements it will check since there are no statements the main method will be done so this time if i run the code only two print statements will be executed okay one print statement that is there in the main method and other print statement which is there in the method one will be executed see first inside main method after that inside method one method okay inside method one method after that control will come back here and program will stop here okay now what if i want to even execute this print statements which are there in other two methods also for that i need to call those methods also so copy this give the name of the method followed by circular brackets this becomes a method calling statement is another method calling statement now i want to call this method also method 3 also copy that copy this paste it here this is also a method calling statement now how many methods i am calling from the main method from the main method from where the program execution begins okay first i am running this statement that is print statement inside main method will be printed after that what will happen guys after this statement has printed this inside main method in the output then this method will be called first method method 1 will be called using this method calling statement control will go from here to here guys okay the control in java will go from here to here and uh, when this gets executed guys when this method gets executed the statement that is there inside this method will be executed that is inside method 1 method will be printed here okay after this particular statement got executed and uh, the method got completely executed the control will from here will go back to here guys okay the control will go back to the line 8 in the main method okay after this the required method is called and uh, executed the control will come back to the main method here okay in the line 8 okay line 7 is done so line 8 it will come in line 8 nothing is there so it will go for line 9 in line 9 again you are calling the method 2 the control will go from here to method 2 to this particular method 2 okay and the code that is there inside the method 2 will be executed so inside method 2 method will be printed here right and after this method got executed again the control will go back to the 10th line that is after this method calling statement it will go that is 10th line it will go okay then then there is nothing here so 11 method 3 method 3 will be called control will come directly here and uh, the code inside the method 3 will be executed that is method inside method 3 method will be printed in the output and again after this method got executed the control will again go back to the main method after this line and in 12th line there is nothing and this is the end of the main method the program execution will stop here okay this is what happens guys run this this time all the methods will be executed okay not only main method since main method is calling the remaining methods all the methods will get executed this is the result okay inside main method after that inside method 1 then after the inside method 2 then inside method 3 all the methods in the this particular demo for class got executed now so this is how guys uh, we can create multiple methods along with main method and we can use the main method for calling the other methods and it's not only that main method only can call the other methods but uh, non main methods also can call the other methods guys okay the non main methods also can call the other method for example we can change this code a bit like this we can change the code what i will do here is i'll make this main method okay i'll make this main method call method 1 okay and i will make this method 1 okay when method 1 is invoked i will make this method 1 call method 2 like this so here from method 1 method 2 method 1 is calling the method 2 okay now method 2 i will make method 2 to call the method 3 like a chain okay like a chain i am doing right method 3 so this is what i am trying to do guys okay first if i run this code what will happen here is first the control will go to the main method because the program execution in java starts from the main method and first it will print the statement inside main method will be printed after that the control will go to this method 1 method calling uh, method calling statement the control will jump from here to here to this particular method because you are calling this method and uh, the code inside the method 1 will be executed that is inside method 1 method will be printed in the output and after that here method 2 is being called 
right? Method two. So controller will jump from here to method two, and the code inside the method two will be executed. That is inside method two method will be printed in the output. After that, method three is being called. The controller will jump to the the last method that is method three, and the code inside the method three will be executed. That is inside method three method will be printed in the output. After this method got executed, the control will go back to the method calling statement. Okay. So from where this particular method is being called, method three is being called from the this method two method. So control will go here, guys. Okay. Now this method two is also completed. Now the control will go to the to a particular method who has called this particular method. Who has called this method two? Method one has called here, right? So control will go from here to here. Since this method is also done, who has called the method one? Okay. So who has called the method one? Main method has called the method one. So control will go here. And since there is nothing inside the main method, also the program execution will stop. This is what is the flow. Run this inside main. All the methods will be executed, guys. Here, not only the main method is calling uh, a non-main method, but non-main methods are calling other non-main methods. Okay. So inside main method, main method is calling this uh, non-main method, and this non-main method is calling this method, this non-main method, and this non-main method is calling this non-main method. Okay. This is what is the output, guys. Inside main method, method one, method two, method three. Okay. Fine. Now, guys, here every time we are calling a method, right? Okay, from a one method we are calling another method, but only one time we are calling. Is it compulsory that only one time you have to call the methods? No, guys. Okay, if I remove all these methods here, uh, for just to make the things simple, guys. Okay, I have removed the extra method. Here I have one main method and only extra non-main method. Okay, so here I am calling this method. How many times this method one is being called? How many times? Only one time I am calling, right? If I run this code. Inside main method will be printed, and uh, after that inside method one method will be printed. You see inside main method and inside method one method. Okay, only one time this particular method is called. What if I do something like this? I'll copy paste this line here. I'll copy paste this uh, five times. Okay, so this time this this means I'm calling the same method that is method one. How many times from the main method? Five times. Is it okay? Is it okay for a Method to call another method multiple times. Yes, sir. Yes, guys. It is okay. Okay. So what will happen? This method will be called five times, and five times this print statement will be executed. Okay. The code inside this method one will be executed five times, guys. Okay. So let's see how the execution will happen. The execution will start from the main method, and first it will print inside main method in the output. After that, the first statement will be executed. That is method calling statement. Method one will be called, and the control will go to the method one, and inside method one. Method will be printed in the output, and after that, the control will come back to the line eight. Okay, since this method is this statement is done right, the control will come back to the line eight, and again this method is being called. Again, control will come here. Again, inside method one method will be printed for second time. After the execution of this method, control will go to the line eight, and again the method will be called. Again, inside method one method will be printed. Again, control will go back. Again, the method will be called. Inside method one method will be printed again. Again, control will go here. To the eleventh line, and again the method will be called. Inside method one, method will be printed for the fifth time. Again, control will go back here, and since there is nothing here, the execution will stop. Okay, that means inside main method will be printed one time, whereas inside method one method will be printed five times because you are calling this method how many times? Five times. Let's run this code, guys. You see here, guys. Here inside main method got printed one time, but whereas inside method one. Since this method is called multiple times, okay. Since this method is called multiple times, method one method statement got printed five times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. How many times you call that method? That many times the code inside the method will be executed. Okay. Fine. So you can also call the methods multiple times. Okay. You can also call the methods multiple times. Now, guys, uh, so far you understood right what exactly are methods inside the methods. We have tried the programming logic and. Uh, Main method is a method in Java where the execution actually starts. And apart from the main method, we can create some non-main methods also inside the same class. Okay, there can be multiple methods created inside the same class. And also, these methods call call themselves. Okay, a method can call another method. Okay, using the method calling statement, a method can call another method. It can be main method or non-main method. Every 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 type of method can call other type of methods. Not only one time, but multiple times also they can. Okay, till here that is a Thing that I have explained, guys. That I have explained. Now let me explain more about the methods, guys. Here, guys, whatever the methods I have used so far, they are not receiving any data. You see, we are simply calling the method, but we are not passing the data to this method. Okay. 
so now i'm going to explain about some parameters guys okay method parameters i'm going to demonstrate a single parameterized method multiple parameterized methods and passing the arguments to those methods all these things i'm going to explain i'll make this example a bit simple now uh, i'll remove this guys okay i'll remove this i'll create a, a kind of method guys uh, let's say public static void void okay print my name okay like this i'll create a method so here here this method is empty guys okay it is a empty method we generally call this as an empty method okay because it doesn't have anything inside the circular bracket what if i say string name okay so what is this if i if i create a variable inside the circular brackets what is this part known as this is known as parameter guys okay what is this known as here name is a parameter only one parameter is there see this is called as a single parameterized method guys okay like this we can create you will understand more guys here what i will do is i will say this out and print out okay welcome welcome space i will simply say plus i am using this plus for concatenation here not addition this is going to concatenate this particular string text with this particular uh, name i will say name okay welcome name that's it now guys here from main method i'll call this method this time okay how to call this method guys i have to use the name of the method followed by circular brackets right this is what i have followed so far but you see i'm getting an error why this is not an empty method earlier the methods were empty so directly you would have called like this the methods calling statement was as simple as this earlier but now this method is not empty it has one parameter this is one parameter string name is one parameter that is there inside the method so what to do i need to pass some data guys okay since this particular method is not an empty method it has a single parameter according to the number of parameters that many number of data you have to pass from the from the method calling statement okay this method calling statement also cannot be empty it has to pass some data to the particular method because this method is not empty it has a single parameter okay based on the number of parameters we have to pass that many amount of data guys okay since here only one parameter is there i need to pass one data what type of uh, variable this is string right that means which type of uh, literal i need to pass to store into this name string literal right so i have to provide double quotes and give some name let's say i'll give my name like arun motori okay i'll give my name arun motori here guys and if i run this code guys this time you see the error is gone right the moment i provided the data in this method calling statement since this data is matching with one of the parameter the, the error is gone now if i run this code what will happen is the execution will start from the main method first it will print inside main method after that it will call this uh, method the control will come here as part of calling this method guys it will also pass the data to this method okay this data that is arun motori string text will go and store into this name okay we will get stored into the name that is into the parameter and here uh, when the method is called the code inside the method will be executed that is welcome space this name what is there in the name now arun motori right that arun motori will be printed okay so again the control will come back here and the execution will stop okay run this code it will print inside main method and welcome arun motor will be printed you see i can also pass any type of data guys okay so what i mean to say here is only arun motor i pass i can call this method again if i want again i'll i'll call this method this time i'll pass a different name okay this time i'll pass a different name let's say i'll pass varun rawat okay i'm passing a different name this time i'll i can call this method any number of times guys okay okay rahul shetty Rahul Shetty. Okay, run this. You see, inside main method, welcome Arun Motori, welcome Varun Dawat, welcome Rahul Shetty. Okay, like that, we can call this method any number of times. Okay, but this time I cannot keep this uh, method calling statement empty. I need to pass some data. This data is known as technically this data is known as argument base. Okay, what is this? Remember this guys, argument. Okay, whereas this name is known as parameter so generally we call this uh, data that we are passing from a method calling statement as arguments whereas the variable that is created inside the method declaration is known as a parameter okay we need to pass the arguments to the parameter okay we need to pass the argument to the parameters that's what is a honda okay simple terms so guys just now i showed you a single parameterized method now let's create a multiple parameterized method okay here only one parameter is there but i will create a multiple parameter 
parameterize method. Okay, I'll remove all this stuff now. I'll create another method. So public static void. Blindly write these keywords, guys, for a while. We'll understand all these keywords in a while. So till I explain about these keywords, you just blindly type these keywords. Okay. So public void, I'll say add. Okay. So here I'll create uh, two parameters this time. Int a comma int b I'll say. Okay. How many parameters are there, guys? Two parameters are there, right? The, now there are two parameters inside this method. Here I'll say int sum. Sum is equal to a plus b. You see, I'm writing the programming logic, right? This is nothing but the programming logic I'm writing inside a method. Okay. The purpose of the methods in Java is to write the programming logic like this. Okay. Now here I'll say sys out sum. Okay. Sys out sum. Like this I can write. Okay. Or I can write in a better way also. Okay, I'll write that later. For now, this is, my, this is what is the thing I will write. So what I will do is uh, I need to call this method, guys. The name of the method is add. Okay, I'll call this method like this. The name of the method is add. If I call like this, I'll get error because why? Why I'm getting the error here in the method calling statement? Because there are no arguments here, right? So number of arguments should match with the number of parameters here. Two parameters are there in this method, which will intake the data into this method. But uh, here, no arguments are I'm passing. That's why Java will not allow you to call the method like this. So based on the number of parameters available here, that many number of arguments you have to provide. For example, I will provide five comma four. Okay, five will go and fall into a guys. Okay, and four will go and fall into b parameter. Okay, this five and four are arguments, and whereas a and b are parameters. Okay? Now run this. Run this. What got printed in the output? So nine got printed in the output, guys. Okay. Nine got printed in the output. I'll remove this statement. Guys. This is not re required anymore. I'll run it again. Nine will be printed in the output. When you call this method, the control will go to this method. Five will go into this first parameter. Four will go into the second parameter. And here the programming logic has been written for calculating the sum of these two numbers, that is A plus B. And that uh, resultant sum will be printed, guys. That is nine got printed. But I don't want the nine to be printed like this. I want to be kind of descriptive here. What I will do here is I'll say double quotes here. I'll remove this sum. I'll simply type double quotes. Okay. The sum of the sum of I'll write like this plus the first parameter I'll say a. Okay. Plus a again and and space plus b plus space is is colon space. Here I'll say plus this sum I will say, okay, this sum. Like this, I can write the logic, okay? The sum of A and B is, here plus is being used as a concatenation operator, guys. The, the text will be concatenated with the number till here. That is, uh, the sum of A is what, guys, five, right? The sum of five will be printed here, till here. And uh, that sum of five will be a concatenated with and. The sum of five and, that will be concatenated with another number four, the five and four, is it will be concatenated with C. is here you see wherever I have to concatenate I'm using plus operator right the sum of five and four is nine will be printed guys okay like that now run this code guys now run this code sum of a and b is nine will be printed in the output guys in a while you see this is a better way of uh, writing right and the sum of five and four is nine so what if I call this method multiple times so this time I'll say three comma two okay three comma two Run this sum of three and two is five should be printed. Two times I'm calling the method when the method is called for the first time with five four. You see the sum of five and four is nine got printed. When the method is called for second time with three two arguments, the sum of three and two is five got printed in the output. So similarly, you can call this method any number of times, guys. Okay, fine. So here I showed you multiple parameters. I can increase the number of parameters, guys. If I say int c, this is also fine. Okay, here I'll say plus c. Okay, let's see. But here, two arguments are there, but three parameters are there. That's for, that's the problem. So that's why you have to pass one more thing. Okay, here also one more thing I'll pass. And uh, I'll say A plus B plus C here. And the sum of A and B, okay, B and plus C, like this, okay. I would extend the statement like the sum of a and b and c is sum. Run this. This time you'll get uh, three parameters. I'm running the program. This is the sum of five, four, and three is twelve. The sum of three, two, and one is six. 
okay like this also you can extend so this is what is multiple parameters guys okay we can create a method having a single parameter multiple parameters and we can pass the arguments to those methods okay according to the number of parameters we have to pass that many number of arguments to that particular method having the number of parameters so fine hope guys you understood what are uh, what are parameterized methods okay the methods can also intake the data guys you see here earlier when i started this session right uh, i created a method which was not intake any in, taking any data but uh, this parameterized methods like this will intake the data guys okay you have three sets of data it is intaking right a b c like that now guys input is there to the methods but what about output is it possible for the methods to return the data okay here we are this particular method calling statement is passing the data to the methods whereas it is not receiving any data back from this method right this calling statement is only passing the data to this method input to this particular method is there but this method is not giving any output right this method is not retaining anything back is there any possibility where we can return something back to this particular method calling statement yes it is possible guys instead of printing here what i will what i will do here is okay instead of printing the sum there what i will do here is i will say i'll use a keyword known as return keyword guys okay return what is the keyword return keyword okay you have to understand this guys you have to use a keyword known as return keyword okay so here i want this particular method not only intake the data but also return some data to return the data this method has to use a keyword known as return what what data it has written the sum of these three values it has to return so after return keyword whatever i want to return that i'll paste here return sum that's it but the error is coming why the error is coming when this particular method is trying to return some data why the method is coming why the error is coming because here we have put some keyword known as void that's the problem void means void means this method is not going to return anything void means nothing this method is not going to return anything but here method is returning something okay but still void keyword is there okay in a method still there is a void keyword guys if a method is returning something then void keyword should not be there it should be replaced with some other keyword that is based on the type of the data that this particular return statement is returning so the sum is of which format guys int data type right sum is int type so it is returning which data int data so here the data type of that particular variable should be provided okay you have to provide int here in place of the void we have to replace you see i have replaced the void with int here right because this method is going to return some integer data okay that's why int data type should be there here so hope guys you understood what is void now right void means if a method is not returning any data back to the calling statement then we have to provide void there but if a particular method is pro it is returning some value the data type of that particular value you have to write here in place of the void okay you have to remove the void and in place of that you have to provide int hope guys you understood what is void now and uh, what is this return keyword and also why we have to provide data type here okay because sum is of which data type in data type so int should be provided here as a return type this is called as return type guys okay void is also a return type guys okay what is void return type void is method return type where where if nothing is returned you provide this void okay you provide this keyword inside the method declaration when method is returning nothing okay when method returns method returns nothing it's a return type but when a method returns nothing then we have to use a keyword known as void but if a method returns in data type values then the return type should be instead of void we have to provide in if a method is returning some string literal then the return type of the method should be string instead of void like that guys okay based on the type of the data you are returning back from the method to the method calling statement that data type or that type of thing class we have to provide as the return type okay instead of void by default void will be there because by default method will not return anything but if you design a method where it has to return something using the return keyword here then we have to change the void keyword to the appropriate data type based on the type of the data that, that this particular method is returning back so here guys add 543 is how the how this will happen let me tell you okay if i run this code guys the execution will start from main method and first this particular i'll remove this part guys for a while okay only one method calling statement i'll keep it for now so this particular 
Met main method will start executing and uh, the statement will be executed. Here, this is a method calling statement. When this method calling statement is called, uh, it will, the controller will go to this method and uh, five will go and fall into A, four will fall into B, and three will fall into C. Okay, and here into sum, sum is declared here and sum is equal to A plus B plus C, that is five plus four plus three, that is nine plus three, that is 12. Total 12 will be stored into sum. Now, this particular method is written in the 12. Okay, that's why the data type we have to specify as in okay the return type need to be specified as return data type should be specified as in because here 12 is being written and who will receive this 12 this method is returning 12 back not only intaking 543 but also returning 12 from back to back to the method calling statement who will receive the 12 here this 12 will be sent back to the method calling statement but what the method calling statement will do with that uh, 12 i'll tell you okay if I run this code as it is, nothing will be printed in the output. Okay, the method will be called, but the returned value will not be utilized by the calling statement. Okay? Nothing got printed. What's the problem here? What's the problem here? Why nothing got printed here? Method is called. Five four three got passed here. The sum has been calculated as five plus four plus three as twelve, and the twelve is returned to this calling statement. But this calling statement is not utilizing the twelve. So what the calling statement has to do to utilize the twelve? Okay, hold the mouse on this calling statement, guys. It clearly mentions that int int type. Okay, the return type is int. It's returning some data. This particular method is returning some data that you can capture here. So what I can do here is I'll say, okay, I'll say int s is equal to like that. I can say, okay, whatever the data that is uh, returned back, okay, returned back from this method to this calling statement, right? That I am storing it a variable. Here you see, understand again, guys. This this statement is calling this method and 543 will be passed to ABC. The sum will be calculated as 12 and the 12 will be sent back to the calling statement. But I'm if I'm not taking advantage of the 12, nothing will happen. That, that 12, I want to store into S of same data type. And here, I'll say S out and here say, I'll simply say S. Okay, run this code. You see, 12 got printed in the output. Here I am printing guys. Okay, here the method is returning the data back to the method calling statement, and uh, the method calling statement is storing the data received from this method into a variable, and that variable we are printing here. Okay, and this is what is happening. Guys. So methods can also return data. Okay, if a method returns nothing, the keyword will be void keyword. If a method returns an integer, okay, the data return type will be int, and uh, we have to store the data into the int. Okay, like that, guys. Okay return string from a method. You can also return a string from a method. For example, I'll create one more method here. So I'll say public static, okay, uh, void. So what I will do here is I'll just uh, write a program here, guys. Uh, you, you will understand what is that. So day, okay, day of the week. Like this, some method I'll write. I'll create a method here. I'm programming something here. I'll say int number okay so uh, let's say guys uh, i want to create this kind of program where if you pass one it has to print sunday if i pass two it has to return monday three if i pass it has to return tuesday the method has to return tuesday if i have to pass if i pass four it has to return wednesday five it should return Thursday, six, then it should return Friday, seven, Saturday, eight. That's it, right? Uh, one to seven only, right? Uh, eight is not required. Like this, I want to code, guys. Uh, how to write this code? Here, I want to receive that number. So here, I'll write the logic, okay? I'll say string day, okay? String some day. And say if number, if number, okay, if this particular uh, provided or password number is equal to one, okay, if it is equal to one, then say return, okay, then return what? Double quotes, okay, double quotes and say Sunday, return Sunday. Then Else if, else if number is equal to two. In this case, 
I'll say return. Return what? Monday. Else if number, the password number is equal to three. In that case, return what? Tuesday. Else if number is equal to four, then return Wednesday. Or else you can also do like this instead of writing this many times return key, right? You can simply say day is equal to day is equal to Monday. Okay. Uh, Sunday, sorry. Sunday. Here simply say day is equal to this is a better way. Okay. We can return it ago at the end. Day is equal to Monday. Here say here I created this string day, right? That day I am assigning if it is number, if the given number is one matching with one, I am assigning Sunday to the day like that. Okay. Day is equal to Tuesday. Here I'll say day is equal to Wednesday. Else if number is equal to five, then day is equal to Thursday. Else if number is equal to six, then day is equal to Friday. Finally, else if number is equal to seven, then day is equal to Saturday. Okay, so like this and finally here I'll say return, return day, return day. Okay, any, part, any particular day I'll return, but when I'm saying return day, I'm getting an error guys, because here, here in this method, guys, the keyword is void means uh, this method is not going to return anything. Void states that this method is not going to return anything. But here I'm going to return the day, right? The day is of which type? String type. So I have to change this void to string. Okay. Simple. The error will be gone. You see, the error is gone. Still there, guys. Okay. Why it is there means here initially I have to give some day here. I, I'll just give some null value here. Okay. Just blank value. Okay. So the now initialized, right? So the error is gone. Okay. So we have to initialize it with. Uh, some kind of blank, then only I can assign here. Okay. So whenever it gives such kind of error, you have to initialize with some null thing. Okay. Here I am initializing with nothing. After that, based on the number, I am initializing with the appropriate days. Now, guys, if I call this method, okay, day of the week of four. If I pass four, guys, what will happen? Day of the week. I am calling this method. I am passing this argument as four. Four will go into the number. So and this method will be called and uh, four is equal to one. No. 4 is equal to 2, no. 4 is equal to 3, no. 4 is equal to 4, matching. So, Wednesday will be assigned to this particular day, and that Wednesday will be returned. Okay. That Wednesday will be returned to this method calling statement. And uh, this method calling statement have to store that. Okay. Have to store that data returned by this method to some day. Day. Okay. String day, I'll say. Okay. Here also string day, I'll say or string D, anything is fine. So, sort, tap, okay, here I'll say, it's what D, I'll simply say D, okay. D means, if I pass four here, what will be printed here? Wednesday will be printed, okay, four is Wednesday, right? So, Wednesday need to be returned and printed, okay, run this. In the output, we should get Wednesday, guys. You see, Wednesday got printed in the output. So hope guys you understood uh, how the methods can return some data also, okay? So here guys, uh, this is all about the methods, okay? Multiple methods exist in the class and they can call themselves and not only one time, multiple times they can call themselves, okay? And also uh, methods can intake some data in terms of parameters, single parameter or multiple parameters. If a method has multiple parameters or single parameter, we need to pass the arguments that is data to this, well, from the method calling statements, we have to pass the data to this uh, parameterized methods. And also the methods not only intake the data, but also can return the data. Okay, but also return the data to the calling statement. So this is all about the methods guys. Hope guys you understood method. Uh, now the next topic I'm going to explain is variables. Okay, I'm going to explain the variables now. As explained uh, in the one of the previous sessions guys, uh, 
variable is a name provided to a reserved memory location okay is a name provided to a reserved memory location but uh, we created only one type of variables the last sessions but now let's learn about the other type of variable that is possible there are two types of variables guys one is a local variable and other one is a global variable what is local variable and what is global variable let me explain okay so guys uh, if you are creating a variable inside a method that is called as a local variable okay if you are creating a variable inside a method that is called as local variable whereas if you create the same variable outside the method and inside the class that is called as a global variable now let me practically demonstrate these variables for you i'll open this uh, editor and i'll create a new class guys uh, say new java class and say demo 5 this time and uh, here guys inside this class i'll create a method public static void or otherwise i'll create a normal method guys that is a public void okay two keywords only i'm using i'm not using the static intentionally public void so i'll say method one okay this is the name of the method i'm giving otherwise i can give something like example method one like this okay any any name you can give guys that's okay okay just i created one method here and uh, so here inside this method if i create a variable okay inside this particular method if i create a variable like uh, int a if i create okay int a is equal to some five now say this out and if i print this a that's okay okay now we can not only create a variable inside the method but also we can create a variable outside the methods directly under the class this variable that you have created inside the method is known as local variable this is a local variable guys okay the method uh, the variable that you have created inside the method is known as local variable what if i create a variable here int b is equal to some 10 okay this variable that you have created outside the method and directly inside the class is known as a global variable this is a global variable guys okay till now guys uh, you are, uh, we i explained about methods first okay the the purpose of the methods is to write the programming logic right okay if you want to write some programming logic in java we have to create methods and inside the methods we have to write the programming logic right whereas if the if you want to store data in the java programming then we have to create variables the purpose of the variables is variables in java is to store the data guys the purpose of the methods in java is to store the programming logic okay like that so and coming to the variables guys there are two types of variables okay variable is a name provided to, to a reserved memory location so that ultimately variable store the data in java programming and there are two types of variables guys that is uh, one is local variable other one is a global variable a variable that is created inside the method for example here the variable a which is kind of created or declared inside the method right this is the starting of the method this is the end of the method inside this method if you declare or create the variable like this the variable becomes a local variable whereas if you create a variable outside the method directly under the class okay directly under the class but outside the method is called as a global variable so what is the problem what is the difference between this local variable and global variable for example if i create one more method here guys so public void example method 2 okay example method 2 like this if i create one more method here and here if i say this out if i say b am i getting any error here and i'm trying to access this global variable inside this method you say i'm not getting any error here okay that's okay but if i say this out if i say a, immediately i'm getting an error you say cannot resolve symbol a error is coming the reason behind that is the scope of this local variable that is created inside the method is only up to the here only okay the scope of the life life of this variable is up to starting from here to here guys okay we cannot access this variable a outside the method only within the example method one only we can access you see here i was accessing this variable a because this statement is inside the same method itself but the moment if i try to access this uh, variable a that is created inside this method that is a local variable of that method outside the method then you see i'm going getting the error but what what's happening with the variable b guys which is a global variable i can access anywhere inside this class the life or scope of this particular variable is 
throughout the entire class okay this global variable scope will be or life lifespan will be throughout the entire class so wherever you want to use this variable you can use this okay like this you see i'm not getting an error with b but i'm getting error with a so hope guys you understood what is a local variable and what is a global variable a variable that is created inside the method is called as local variable and the scope or lifespan of that particular local variable is up to the method only okay whereas a variable that is directly created inside the class but outside the methods is known as a global variable and that kind of variables can be accessed anywhere inside the class okay anywhere inside the class even outside the methods also you can access okay fine so guys uh, this is what are nothing but variables now let's move on to the next topic next topic that you have to understand as part of this session is the class and objects very important topic guys okay class and objects let me explain in java guys classes enclose everything okay in java the classes enclose everything what do i mean by everything most of the things that we generally create inside a class are nothing but variables and methods apart from variables methods other things also exist but classes in java enclose everything okay when you create a class in java it will enclose all the variables and methods you see here so whatever the variables i created it may be local variable or global variable whatever the methods i created right all these variables and methods are inside what all these variables are and methods are inside what inside a class right in java classes enclose all the stuff like uh, these are the properties guys okay variables and methods are the properties of the class so classes enclose the properties like variables and methods where variables store the data whereas methods store the programming logic right methods are for storing the programming logic so now let's understand the class in a different angle okay so till now you understood that class will enclose the variables and methods right like this okay inside the class we'll create the variables and methods you understood but now to give a broad definition or explanation of the class guys okay class is a template used for creating objects okay in order to understand this statement guys you need to first understand what exactly is a object okay in order to understand the state statement that is a class is a template used for creating objects you have to first understand what is an object guys okay then only i'll understand this statement okay fine let me explain about objects first what are objects objects means real world entities okay so in order to under understand objects in java guys first you have to understand the real world entities what are these real world entities anything in this world is a entity real world entity for example okay a pen that you can see right is a real world entity a book is a real world entity okay a laptop is a real world entity whatever you see in this world okay a calendar is a real world entity a mobile phone or phone your phone okay is a real world entity mouse mouse pad okay everything okay water bottle everything is a real world entity guys a bag a car a house okay so whatever you see in this real world everything can be considered as a real world entity this kind of real world entities this kind of real world entities if you want to okay represent them in java programming if you want to represent this kind of real world entities in java programming okay if you want to represent this kind of real world entities in java programming then in java we have to represent them as what as objects real world entities in java programming are represented as what objects fine so what is what are objects understood now objects are the representation of real world entities in java programming simple words objects are nothing but the representation of the real world entities in java programming that's why java is an object oriented programming long language right that means using java programming we can represent the real world entities in java programming as objects okay real world entities in the real world as objects in the java program okay that's why java is an object oriented programming language and these objects can be created using a class okay these objects in java can be created using class i'll explain more guys okay how objects can be created using class and all for now you understood right what exactly are objects our ultimate goal is to represent this real world entities in java programming as objects okay that's what is our ultimate goal to represent them we need to create the objects right to represent this real world uh, entities as objects in our java programming we need to first create the objects right we have to create objects but how to create objects using classes we can create objects okay using classes we can create objects guys okay now i'll show you how to create objects using classes in java okay 
so for that i will take some example guys like a uh, I'll create a class. So here I'll close all this stuff. I'll uh, otherwise I'll delete all this stuff, guys. Okay, whatever I created so far, I'll delete all them, all of them. Okay, I'll delete. Okay, I'll freshly create new class, new Java class, guys. Okay, I'll name this class as car class. Okay, car class. So inside this car class, guys. Okay. I want to create a template, guys. Okay, here you see class is a template. They are saying one. If you partially break this statement, guys, one of the statement here, the one of the part of the statement is saying that class is a template. Okay, so here I'm creating this class, and this class I want to create as a template. Okay, as a template. What is a template? I want to create a template of a class car. What will be the template of the car? Generally, guys, what the class will contain? What the class will enclose? Class is enclose. Variables and methods, right? The properties that is variables and methods. So here I'll create some variables and properties inside this class as part of creating the template of this car. Okay. So what can? How can I create the template of a car? Fine. I'll show you. I'll say string model of the car. String color of the car. Int. Okay. Int price of the car. Then uh, double mileage of the car. wheels int wheels wheels of the car okay like this i can create some variables okay for as as part of creating this uh, car class template i am creating some variables like this okay i can create lot of things guys okay i can create lot of uh, variables like this uh, for defining this car class template and inside this car class i'll create not only the variables but also the methods like public void start car okay so here guys already about the methods you are clear now right uh, the method is like this and void is a written type of the method this method is not returning anything and public i'll explain later guys okay only public keyword is pending in case of methods for you okay so public void start car so fine so here so here i'll say sys out okay model this model plus car started okay like this and i'll create few more methods guys public void stop car like this i'm creating template for this car guys okay using some variables and methods right i'm creating the template for this car car class so sys out model plus car stopped done next i want to print all these details of this car so public void car details okay like this one method will be there car details say this out okay i'll say model of the car is what is the model of the car this particular model okay plus model the next one the color of the car okay this out color of the car is plus color then next one price this out price of the car is plus price the next one mileage right mileage this out mileage of the car is plus mileage and then wheels this is out number of wheels okay plus wheels that's it number of car wheels plus wheels okay that's it so like this guys like this i'll create i have created some variables as part of creating a template of this car class i created some variables and also some methods also i created okay three methods this particular car class template has five variables and three methods okay this forms the template of the class this is what is the template of the class so here as part of uh, this statement class is a template right here car class is a template like this this is what is the template guys okay car class is a template now what i want to do is using this template 
using this class template having some variables and methods defining about the car and all using this car class template i want to create some objects okay using this template we can using this car class template we can create objects guys that's what we can do how to create objects then how to create objects so let me show you guys how to create objects i'll create one more class here i'll name that class as demo class so i'll just drag this possible can i drag this to this side yeah demo class okay, i cannot drag side by side i'm trying let me try once okay what i can do here is uh, i'll open i'll close all these classes and uh, i'll simply say right click just i'll open this car class first and uh, here demo class i created just now i'll right click here and say open in right split okay so that you can see it here this is one of the way you can see the car class template and the demo class together inside the demo class guys i'll create the main method inside this main method i will using the car class template i'll create the object here okay inside the main method using this car class template i'll create an object here how to create an object how to create the object using this car class template so for that guys so yeah so what i will do here is so how to create objects i'll tell you so there is a keyword in java guys known as new keyword okay what is the keyword name new keyword using this keyword we can create objects in java okay using this new keyword we can create objects in java guys new and name of the class for which you want to create the object i want to create an object for this car okay so i'll say car here new car okay so for this car class template i am creating an object guys using which keyword new keyword followed by the name of the class and provide circular brackets and provide it okay this is a object okay here we have created object okay object got created with the help of what we have created the object with the help of the car class template we created an object and using the new keyword we have created the new car like this if you write the object will be created what will happen if the object is created what will happen in the memory is let's say this is a computer memory in the computer memory the moment you say new car here okay when this program gets executed you see when you run this demo demo class the execution will start from the main method and the code inside the main method will be executed and here the first statement will be executed where new car this new keyword will create an object for the car class okay so what happens in the let's assume that this is a computer memory inside the computer memory some memory memory will be reserved for this object okay the moment you say new car some memory will be reserved for this object okay here this is object one object one and this memory got reserved for this object in the computer that's what happens guys fine so if i again say one more new car what happens the memory another object will be created guys okay second object will be created you see using the class template we are creating multiple objects using the class template we are creating multiple objects so instead of creating multiple objects what i want to do is i want to create multiple first i'll i want to create one one object so guys uh, you see object is there the memory is there but how to refer to this memory how to refer to this memory there should be some kind of variable kind of stuff right right so for that guys i'll give some name here okay i'll give something like uh, svdi okay i'll give some name like svdi i'll tell you what is this svdi some name i am giving and here i need to declare that with again with car like this okay i have to declare that again with car car svdi is equal to new car what is this guys this svdi here will be used for referring to this object memory okay svdi is the object reference what is called as the object reference object reference using this svdi which is one of the example here okay uh, using this object reference we can refer to this object memory okay that got created using the new keyword okay now and after this guys this object creation statement all together guys is object creation statement if you want to create an object in java guys okay first you have to use a new keyword and create the object and uh, to refer to this memory that got allocated to the object we have to use object reference and that object reference should be of the same class type that is car okay we have to declare the object reference with the same class type so this is object creation statement okay the complete object creation statement this is now what we can do here is 
now you see this this memory is kind of empty guys there is nothing here in this object memory there is nothing stored if i want to store something what i have to do is i using the object reference okay using the object reference i can refer this memory right i'll simply say svdi is object reference dot model okay is equal to swift i will mention what will happen here the moment i say svdi dot model is equal to swift here in the memory model is equal to swift okay swift will be stored model is equal to swift fine then uh, again if i say svdi svdi dot color color is equal to if i say red color in this object memory color is equal to red will be stored now next one svdi dot okay svdi dot here i can give model as uh, swift vdi also no problem svdi is short form for swift vdi guys okay fine svdi dot price price is equal to let's say i'll give the price guys uh, price as like 8 lakhs 8 lakhs in indian rupees done then price is done then svdi dot here price is equal to 8 lakhs will be stored okay price is also done then svdi dot mileage mileage is equal to i'll give some mileage like 24. Uh, 45 okay like this some mileage i'll give so here mileage is equal to 24.45 the mileage then svdi dot wheels wheels is equal to 4 okay here wheels is equal to 4 will come done so far so good right so like this we created these things now if we want one more variable let's say string Uh, company okay company of this particular car let's say then svdi dot company is equal to okay maruti suzuki is a company okay of this car fine so here company is equal to maruti suzuki okay is a company we got so guys you see an object has been created with uh, its own you see uh, can you feel feel guys that uh, i represented a swift vdi car maruti suzuki swift vdi car i represented here a real world entity right these are all the details of the real world entity or not color of the car and all this properties of the car right this is a real world entity i represented the real car in the form of an object here how how can i create this object with the help of the car okay with the help of this class i was able to create this object so now i can create few more objects if if i want to represent one more one more object let's say another car i want to represent okay in the real world there is one more car let's say honda ms is there i want to represent that honda ms uh, as an object in this particular java programming so with the help of the car class template i can represent the, create that object guys how to create that object simple say new car create the object this will create the object guys new keyword will create the object for the car class and uh, so the moment i say new car in the computer memory some memory slot will be allocated for this new car and this will be given object to second object we are creating guys second object so i need to refer to this object memory right to refer to this object memory i need a object reference so i'll give the object reference as h okay honda amaze right HMZ I'll give okay Honda MS okay HMZ I'll give so here I'll say HMZ is equal to this object reference I need to declare this object reference with the same class so that is car okay this is a full object creation statement now using this object reference I can define the car okay that is uh, HMZ dot here what is their model is there okay all these properties are coming here guys okay whatever the properties that are there inside this car are coming here so I'll say model is equal to amaze is a model then hmz dot color color is equal to i'll give gray color then hmz dot 
uh, jump dot dot uh, price is equal to let's say nine lakhs. Then HMZ dot mileage is equal to 24.4, uh, not 24, here 14 I'll give, or no? Then HMZ dot wheels, number of wheels is equal to four. HMZ dot company, what is the name of the company? Honda is the name of the company, right? Honda is a brand, company brand. So I created one more object here, guys. Similarly, I want to create one more object. Okay. Third, you see, I'm representing a lot of real world entities, like a lot of cars that exist in the real world as objects in Java programming. And that objects I'm creating with the help of this template known as class template, car class template. So I'll create one more. So here, guys, I give all the details, right? Model is equal to a miss. Color is equal to gray. Price is equal to nine lakhs. Then uh, mileage is equal to 14. Then wheels is equal to four. Company is equal to Honda. All the details I give, okay? Now, the moment I say new car here, another object will be created, guys, okay? Here, another object will be created, the computer memory here like this, okay? Another object will be created. And this object, I'll say object three. And so let's say, I'll go with uh, Hyundai i10, okay? Hyundai i20, okay? Hyundai i20 and to i20 car I want to represent, okay? The real world car that exists in the real world, right? Hyundai i20 in Indian market, right? That thing, that car I'm going to represent in this Java programming. So already object is created here and uh, I, I need to create an object reference, a meaningful object reference I'll create. I'll simply say Hyundai h i20, okay? I'll simply give h i20. Okay, like this as object reference h i 20 is equal to i'll say and i need to define this uh, object reference with the car class type only then using this object reference i'll define this car i will define this object that is model of the car is equal to okay um, i 20 is a model then h i 20 dot color of the car is equal to white then H I 20, the price of the car, the price of the car is like uh, 10 lakhs. H I 20 dot mileage of the car is, let's say 12 only, 12.12. Then H I 20 dot wheels, wheels is equal to again, same four. H I 20 dot company is equal to Company is Hyundai. Hyundai is the company behind this car, right? So like that, how many real world entities I represented so far? Using the single class template, I created multiple objects, okay? Swift VDI, then Honda Maze, then Hyundai i20, three cars I represented already, right? I can represent any number of cars I want, okay? So only one time I need to create this class template like this, which contains some variable sign, methods describing about this class, that is car, and uh, the template of, for creating the template of the class, like car class, we have to create the variables and methods, and you have to create one more class, and inside that main method, inside the main method, you need to create some objects like this, okay? Just to get started. Three objects I created, guys, I represent three real world entities, three real world cars here, using this car class template, okay? Who is creating these objects? Car, okay? Class is creating, okay? With the help of the class, you see? Class is a template used for creating objects. Is it correct or not? Okay, using this template, we created these three objects. That is real world entities. Objects are real world entities, right? Fine guys. So now guys, uh, what I want to do here is, so already I created this, uh, you know, right, objects. Now using this SVDI, if I say SVDI, SVDI, first object reference, and I will call this methods guys, okay? I'll call this methods, start car, stop car, and I'll say stop car, then SVDI dot stop car. And also I want to get the details of this uh, car, 50 VDI car details I want, SVDI dot method. Uh, to call this methods guys, you see, I should not be calling directly. I should not be directly saying start car from this uh, method, right? I should not be calling that. Rather you have to use object reference, okay? Rather you have to use this object reference while calling these methods. So SVDI dot stop uh, start car, 
so here start car guys okay start car svdi dot stop car svdi dot car details okay like this i can call all the methods of the car template using this object reference okay fine so i'll just do one thing here just for the our benefit i'll just write this uh, just as a separation point of view i'll add this we'll understand why i have written like this so here guys not only i can start a swift vdi car not only i can start stop a swift vdi car not only i can get the details of the swift vdi i can also get the details of this I can also start the honda maze i can also also stop the honda maze i can also get the details of the honda maze i can also start the uh, honda i20 i can also stop the honda i20 i can also get the details of the honda i20 what i have to do i have to use the respective object references okay here for honda maze i have to use hmz right hmz dot start car hmz dot stop car hmz dot car details okay it will get the car details of the honda maze okay similarly h i20 dot start car h i20 dot stop car h i20 dot car details okay now run this guys run this main method okay so in order to run the main method i have to run this demo class right when i run the demo class here three objects will be created okay with the help of that class with the help of the class template three objects will be created not only created guys we also will be calling the methods of this template okay so run this so all the details should be printed properly guys okay so the program is running you see in the output guys if i expand this output you see proper output came first 50 vdi car started 50 vdi car stopped model of the car is 50 vdi color of the car is red price of the car is 8 lakhs mileage of the car is 24.45 and the number of car wheels is 44 okay so there is one more thing missing guys okay we have to update this method guys okay so we also included the company of the car right here we added the company i'll add the details here this out company of the car is company of uh, car is what is the company of the car guys car is this particular company okay plus company i'll say done now this time run it again this time you should also get the company details you see started stopped 50 day car started stopped and uh, details of the 50 day car model of the car color of the car price of the car mileage number and company okay maruti suzuki is a company similarly you see this is a separation we got right that's the reason i added that this statement here for separation amaze car started stopped amaze gray 9 lakhs 14.04 honda okay i20 car started stopped i20 white 10 lakhs 12.12 four and hyundai okay so this is what is the thing guys okay this is what can be achieved in java guys okay so class and objects is all about the class and objects guys, okay hope you understood what exactly the class and objects objects in java are to represent the real world entities like the way we have represented some real world entities like swift vdi car and amaze honda uh, honda amaze car and uh, hyundai i20 cars right which are there in the real world in the programming we have represented and to create such kind of objects we need classes right to create such kind of objects we need classes so classes will contain the variables and methods okay so to create this uh, class templates we have to use the variables and methods like this like the car class template is created using the variables and methods right so without that we cannot create the template and uh, using this template we created the objects simple term okay fine guys now we are done with the class and objects which is very important topic guys this class and objects are very important topic now let's go with the next topic guys that is constructors okay next topic is constructors let's get started with the constructors now but before going to constructors guys let me explain one more thing okay so before i start this constructors let me explain one thing here guys you see uh, i was writing a lot of lines of code right for example for every object uh, i have to initialize so if there are like six uh, six uh, variable properties here i have to write this six lines here right inside this main method i have to write this six line not only for a single object but also for multiple objects you see another six lines another six lines if there are like 10 or 20 objects you see i need to write uh, around right so 20 objects are there 20 into 6 120 lines i have to write okay so that many number of uh, lines i have to write so that is a problem so what i have to do i have to reduce this number of lines okay at this moment i want to reduce this number of lines to make that possible guys what i will do is i'll just create a method here okay so inside this template 
car class template i'll create a method first okay so public public void initialize you can give any name guys okay set data or initialize data whatever name you feel you can give initialize data like this some some method i'm creating this is the name method right this is nothing but a method okay public void initialize data kind of method i'm creating and here how many how many variables are there okay so here six right six variables so this six data need to be assigned to the six variables so what i will do here is i'll simply say the first variable is of string type string i'll say m because if i give model right this model will match with this model okay that will be confusing so what i will do here is i'll give uh, mo okay string mo then uh, string for color i'll give co uh, here i'll say int price i'll give pr then double i'll give double as mi mi means mileage and uh, int here i'll give wheels for wheels i'll give double h and uh, for company i'll give string com com for company okay like that so i created this many number of uh, i'll just uh, kind of drag it this side so that you can see this screen so you see one initialized data kind of method i created and uh, different parameters associated this particular variables of the class i created okay now why i created like this is so instead of initializing like this right instead of uh, doing writing this many lines of code using this svdi i'll simply call this method guys okay initialize data method i'll call dot initialize data method i'll call and this this method has six parameters okay how many sets of data i need to pass six sets of data i need to pass okay to pass six sets of data first i need to pass the model guys so i'll put the mod, uh, i'll pass the model here comma it will go to yamu okay it will go to yamu and second one i'll pass the color this will go to co color this will go to price comma price so this will go to mileage comma mileage and this will go to number of wheels okay so let me drag this okay so next one is uh, wheels then after wheels i'll be passing the company name like this done so this many lines are not required now okay remove all these lines guys you see single line i was able to do the job right what i am doing is uh, i am calling this method guys simple terms i am calling this uh, initialize data method and uh, which has parameters and this data that is or this data that need to be assigned to this variables are being passed as an arguments to this parameters so swift vdi will go into mo and red will go and so on guys okay so what i have to do is the process is not done guys okay the initialization process is not done what i have to do here is i have to assign this mo to this model okay i have to say model is equal to model of the car is equal to this mo i have to say okay similarly color color is equal to co i need to say okay this color color is equal to co then uh, price is equal to price is equal to this pr into the pr we'll get the data right so pr then uh, mileage mileage is equal to what is the mileage here guys the mileage is called mi i'll give mi here then uh, wheels wheels is equal to wheels is equal to wh i'll give wh here and next one next one is uh, com that is company okay company is equal to company is equal to com okay like this i'll initialize so i don't have to write six lines now simple whenever i want to initialize just write this call this initialize data method and pass the data that is need to be initialized okay automatically this method will initialize the data here similarly for the second object also guys same thing should happen that is a uh, hmz honda amaze dot initialize data here i need to pass this data guys that is a uh, amaze comma amaze comma gray comma price that is nine lakhs comma then uh, mileage that is 14 comma then uh, wheels that is 4 comma and company that is honda okay i'll remove all this stuff done you see single line done 
Similarly, for third object also, using the object reference that is h i20 dot initialize data, I need to pass all this data in a single line. Okay, this is a method calling statement, guys, and uh, which is passing the data, and this method is initializing the data for us. Okay, so white, comma, then 10 lakhs, comma, then 12.12, comma, number of wheels, that is 4 comma and here finally Hyundai put it here done remove all these lines done guys you see it got simplified a bit right the initialization process got initialized uh, simplifies a bit because for every object I don't no need to write six lines here okay simply call this method initialize data method things will be done now let's see whether the things are still working or not okay after following this process of where I created the method to initialize this uh, variables for us okay so is this still working or not okay if i run this code will i get the same output earlier we got some output right the same output we should get here so after doing this process run this if you are getting the same output then things are good guys okay so let's wait you see the same output we got swift vdi car started stopped okay model of the car red and all those stuff and here amaze amaze related stuff and i20 related stuff you see the output didn't change a bit right so this has simplified the process of initializing. This has simplified the process of initializing, but there is a problem here, guys. What the problem is, I don't understand what these parameter names are. Here, MO means what, CO means what, okay? This code is not understandable. So, but uh, what I have to do to make it understandable? Here, MO means model, guys, okay? The moment I give model here, guys, there is a problem, okay? You see, this model is same, and this is a class-related model. This is a parameter, okay? This is a class variable and this is a parameter. Both are different, right? Both are different. So what I have to do here is if I have if both are same, what is the problem? If this is a model, this is a model, and this is color, and this is instead of CY it is color only. Instead of PR, it is price only. What is the problem? I'll tell you. Okay. Here mileage. Here wheels. If the parameter names are matching with the class variable names. Then what is the problem? I'll explain. Okay. So what is the problem here is so if I have to assign this model with model, I have to give model here, right? Model is equal to model, I have to give. Color is equal to color, I have to give. Okay. So class variable and I'm thinking that this is a class variable. I'm just thinking that this is a parameter. Okay. Like that I'm giving price is equal to price. Mileage is equal to mileage. Like this, I have to give. Wheels is equal to wheels. Company is equal to company. Like this, I have to give guys. But the problem here is here we are not assigning the parameter to the class variable guys rather we are assigning to the parameter to itself you see this is a parameter you see when i double click on this parameter is getting highlighted instead of the model okay this model parameter is getting highlighted instead of the model car variable and this one also is highlighting the same thing okay i am assigning the parameter to parameter itself i am not assigning this model model this uh, parameter model to the class variable model okay so what is the problem how how to differentiate this now because now the class variables have the same name as the parameter names or the parameter names have the same name as the class names in this case how to differentiate the parameter uh, parameters from this class variables for that guys to mention that this model belongs to the class i have to use a keyword known as this keyword okay i have to use a keyword known as this this dot model okay so here there is a topic guys you see this keyword that i am explaining right now itself this dot model i have to mention okay i don't have to compromise with the parameter names because if i use the short forms to uh, make them different from the class variables. I cannot understand them, right? So I have to give the same name so that uh, I can understand the code now. I can understand the parameters now if I give the full names. But the problem is they are matching with the class names and we can, we are unable to differentiate. In order to differentiate the class variables from the parameter variable names, okay, then you have to use a keyword known as this. Okay, this dot model means class variable model. Okay, normal model means parameter model. Again, if I use this here, the color variable which belongs to the class, okay, this dot price, I'm assigning the parameter to the class variable, okay, that is clear now. This dot mileage is equal to mileage. This dot wheels is equal to wheels. When class variables and parameters have the same name, to differentiate the class variables from the parameter names, okay, I have to use this keyword, okay. So this is what is this keyword purpose, guys, okay. Fine. Now let's see whether I am getting the same output or not. Run this code, you'll get the same output. If you are getting the same output, everything is fine. Let's run this code and we should get the same output, guys. You see, the same output came. Swift VDI, MIS, and I20. 
same output came now the next thing next thing is now this is the right time for us to go with the constructors guys okay now we are at the constructors now we can understand constructors still i have one problem here guys okay why i want to go with the constructors i will tell you the problem here is i don't even want to write this line i don't in, in order to initialize this variables of the class i don't even have to explicitly call this method and initialize the data automatically it should happen i don't want to waste this line also earlier there were six lines but with the help of the method i have initialized the data and i reduced that to one one line okay for every object one line is there now okay for every object one line three objects are there, three lines are there i don't even want to write this three lines guys okay i want to overcome this problem okay where i don't even want to call this method separately for initializing the data how that is possible with the help of constructors it is possible guys okay with the help of constructors it is possible so what exactly are these constructors and uh, what they are and all i am going to explain now first of all guys constructors are similar to methods they look similar to methods guys okay like this only it will look like constructors look similar to the method but there are some differences between the methods and constructors okay so here methods here i'll write constructors constructors look similar to methods only but what is the difference constructors while methods have their own name their own name you can use their own name for example here initialize data is the name of the method okay whereas constructor should have the same name same name as class name they cannot have any other names guys okay constructor should have the same name as a class name what is the name of the class here car so constructor should also have the name as car only it cannot have initialized data understood guys the first rule of the constructors is constructors should have the same name as a class name constructors are similar to methods but with differences what are the differences constructors look similar to methods but the difference here is methods can have their own names they don't have to be having the same name as a class names but constructors should have the same name as a class names that's first one second thing is constructors are automatically called when an object is created for the class okay i'll tell you about that that second difference i'll tell you later but before that methods have return type okay that is either void or some data type will be there right return type void will be there but constructors no return type second difference that you have to understand is constructors will not have any return type first methods have their own name whereas constructors should have the same name as a class name second thing is methods have return type that is void or any data type but constructors should not have any return type okay this void keyword will not be there or nothing will be returned okay constructors will not return anything so constructors doesn't have any return type fine these are the two main differences guys so now let me convert this uh, initialized data okay so what i will do here is apart from having this method right i'll create one constructor here as i mentioned constructors look similar to methods so public will be there but here void will not be there return type will not be there as i already mentioned right return type void will be there in methods but in constructors there is no return type i should not type void here okay after the public directly i have to give the name of the constructor but another difference as you have seen methods will have their own names like initialize data start car stop car car details like that but constructors constructors should have the same name as a class name what is the name of the class car copy this car class name and provide here and provide the circular brackets you see constructors look similar to the methods but name of the constructor should be name same as the name of the class but whereas method names can be anything right it don't have to be class names okay and also here return type is not there here void is there which is a return type of the methods but here return type is not there for the constructors now what i want to do is i'll simply say public car okay i'll simply say public car and whatever i have done here these parameters these parameters right i'll copy from these parameters from here and paste them as it is into the constructor okay like this i'll copy paste and all these statements also i'll move to the constructor i'll just move to the constructor here okay fine so you see i am giving the same parameters as this method for initializing and uh, i am i am actually doing the initialization using constructor right so what i am trying to achieve here is what i am trying to achieve here is here i want to i don't want to call this methods initialize data method i don't want to call so what i will do here is i'll pass the data this data okay this data that i need to pass i'll copy and paste here that's it i don't have to call it explicitly now i have to remove this okay done similarly this data 
let me drag it here. This data I'll pass here. This statement is not required now. And this data I'll pass here. That means this statement is not required. Understood, guys? You see, I have, I have still made it more easy, right? Initialization part, I made it more easy. While creating the object itself, while creating the object itself, I am trying to initialize, guys, okay? How this is happening, I will explain, okay? How this is happening. I don't need this uh, separate method now, okay? I can remove this now, okay? Constructor is going to initialize the data for us, okay? And I don't even have to call a particular separate method for initializing the data now, okay? Constructor will automatically initialize the data for us. How this will happen, I will tell you, okay? Run this code, first of all, run this code and see whether you are getting the same output or not without having that method to initialize the data. With the help of constructor, I'm initializing the data. Still, I'm getting the same output. How this is possible? Here, guys, we are calling the constructor. This, so automatically, when you create an object, guys, okay, when you create an object, automatically the constructor will be called. This part of the object creation statement is known as the constructor calling statement, okay, from here, guys, okay. From here to at the end, this is a constructor calling statement. We are calling the constructor here. Whatever the blue highlighted, right? This is a constructor, like method calling, right? Here we are calling the constructor. And this constructor calling statement is part of the object creation statement only. When you create the object, automatically the constructor is being called, right? The moment you create an object, the constructor is automatically called and this data is getting initialized. Data is being sent to these parameters of this constructor and these parameters are getting as into the class variables. You see, it's more simple, simple, right? So constructors are similar to methods, but they have the below differences. Constructors have the have, uh, constructors have the same name as a class name, where the methods have their own name, and constructors have no return type, whereas methods have return type. And one more thing here is constructors are automatically called. We have to explicitly call the methods, right? Explicitly call the methods. Whenever you want to run any code in the method, you have to explicitly call them, but constructors are automatically called when we create objects, okay? Constructors are automatically called on creating objects. When you create objects, constructors are automatically called. That's why it makes our job of initializing the data to this uh, class variables even more simple. We don't even have to call the methods, okay? Using the object reference, I don't have to call the method for initializing the data since while creating the object itself, constructors are automatically called and the data will be initialized. Okay. So what 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 is the main purpose of the constructors then? Okay. What is the generally in Java, guys? What is the main purpose? Why constructors are generally used in Java? The main purpose of the constructors in Java is to simplify the initialization of the data. Okay. To it will simplify the initialization process. Constructors simplify the initialization process. Okay. So without constructors, I have to create a method and initialize the data. And for that, I need to use object reference and call the method separately whenever I want to initialize. But with constructors, guys, when you create an object, automatically the constructor calling statement is part of the object creation statement, is calling the constructor in the class. And automatically, the data of this class is getting initialized. So constructor simplifies the initialization of the data in Java. OK, that's the main purpose, guys. That's the main purpose. Fine, that's the main purpose. So here guys, so fine, here there is some data, so things are good, okay? Here there is some data, so the things are good. What if I create one more class here? Uh, or else I need to explain it separately, guys, okay? So whatever I wanted to explain here, I need to explain that separately. I'll close all these things, okay? Now you understood, right? Uh, the purpose of the constructors is to simplify the initialization of the data. I'll create one more thing, new, uh, I'll just say, I'll create one class, guys, a bank or something. Okay, I'll create a class known as bank. And here I'll create some properties. Okay, string, name of the bank. Okay, name of the bank. Then uh, what else we can think about bank? Uh, string, account type one. String, sample one, I'll create, guys, account type two. Like this, I'll create some variables for a bank. And here I'll create public. Void. I'm creating some methods, guys. Public void. Uh, then I'll say get bank details. Okay, simple method I'm creating. Get bank details. That is uh, simply I'll print out. 
name of the bank is name of the bank is place name then sys out uh, account type okay account uh, otherwise i'll give some different names like same name account type i'll not give string uh, string country in which the bank is available okay country country where the bank operates okay country of the bank is like this sample data i'll give guys okay so some country i'll give like this very simple one simple class i created now i'll create some another class say demo2 i'll just split and open it in the right side okay fine i'll close this here so here we have the bank class as a template this is a template and here we have the demo2 now guys i want to create an object for this bank so i'll say new bank right new bank so i cannot create the object directly like this i have to create the main method first inside the main method i have to create the object guys so here i have to say new bank so here an object is created for this bank i'll give some name for the bank say hdfc hdfc or uh, okay so so i have to declare this with bank only now now guys here this portion of this object creation statement is known as what is this guys constructor calling statement what is this bank whatever that i highlighted in this object creation statement is nothing but a constructor calling statement but does this bank has any constructors here guys does the bank has any constructors here no right by default this bank class doesn't have any constructors but am i getting any error here no right if i run this code nothing will happen guys you say nothing will happen if i run this code nothing will happen even though there is no constructor nothing is happening no problem why why guys because java is maintaining an empty hidden constructor here okay java is internally maintaining an empty hidden constructor here guys that looks like this okay public bank an empty hidden constructor okay you see there is no code inside this bank uh, constructor name of the constructor is same as the name of the class and the return type is not there it looks like a method but the return type won't be there and name of the uh constructor will be same as the name of the class okay this kind of empty hidden constructor will be maintained by java internally guys that's why whenever i create an object statement like this this bank calling statement will call this empty hidden constructor maintained internally by the java guys so that's why nothing no error is coming okay no error is coming here that's why we are not getting any error guys so what i will do here is what if i say something like if i explicitly create okay even though the bank class is internally maintaining an empty hidden constructor the way i have shown that still if i try to override that okay like this if i try to write like a, if i explicitly create an a kind of a empty constructor like this and here write here i'll say welcome to the bank if i say and if i run the code what will happen in this case if i run the code what will happen so this one will call this constructor okay earlier there was empty hidden constructor so empty hidden constructor doesn't have any code inside the constructor so nothing happened but this time if i explicitly write a constructor here which is kind of uh, having no parameters and is ha having this kind of code in this case when i run this statement guys in the, with the object creation statement only this portion of the object creation statement is nothing but the constructor calling statement and it will call this constructor and the code inside the constructor will be executed automatically okay run this code when i create the object automatically the constructor will be called and in the output you will get welcome to the bank guys welcome to the bank right welcome to the bank got created so this is what had happens guys but what is the main purpose of the constructor the main purpose of the constructor is to initialize the data guys so what i have to do here is i have to initialize the data here like a string name comma string country and here i have to say this dot name is equal to name this dot country is equal to country i have to initialize and this time i'll get the error because empty constructor is not there right empty constructor is not there we here we have a constructor having some parameters so what i have to do here i have to give 
pass the data case. So here name of the bank is HDFC, comma. The country is let's say India. Okay, like this I'll say. Now this time what will happen? If I run this code, you see you will not get any output. Your error is gone. First of all, the error is gone, and uh, you see error is gone. You will not get any output. But if I say HDFC dot get bank details, this method if I call, I'll get the bank details. Okay, run this. I'll get the bank details. Okay, printed in the output. Name of the bank is HDFC. Country of the bank is India. Okay, like that, guys. So guys, you understood uh, what is this object creation statement and how the object creation statement is automatically calling the constructor. Okay, some portion of the object creation statement is actually calling the constructor. This portion of the object creation statement is the constructor calling statement. By default, there will be empty hidden constructor maintained by Java. If there is no constructor mentioned here, Java will maintain an empty hidden constructor. Okay, that's why when you create objects like this, you will not get any errors. You will not get any errors. Okay. Fine. Okay, guys. So this is all about the constructors, and I also completed about the this. Okay, this keyword is also completed, and few more topics are there. That is overloading, inheritance, and overriding. That I will be explaining now. Okay. Now let's start with the overloading topic. So before understanding overloading, let me explain one thing. That is, I'll open IntelliJ, and here I'll create one more class, guys. Say new. Class. I'll just name this uh, class as some animal or something. Okay, some class. Okay, any name. So inside this class, guys. Okay, inside this class, I'll be creating a method. Okay, public void method method a. I'll create. I'm just naming the method as method a. Fine. So here I'll say system dot out dot print ln inside. Method A. Okay, done. Now, can I cr create a can I create a duplicate method inside this class? Guys, you see, already animal class is having this method A, and inside this class, can I create the same method again? Let's see what will happen if I try to create the same method having the same name inside the same class. You see, the moment I try to create a duplicate method having the same name inside the same class, I am getting this error. You see, method A is already defined in this animal class, so you cannot create it, right? So we cannot create duplicate methods inside the same class in Java. Then, is there any other alternative way where we can still create this uh, duplicate method inside this uh, same class with the same name? Yes, guys, there is a way. Okay. So to understand that, it's known as overloading, guys. Okay. If you want to create duplicate methods having the same name inside the same class, okay, we have to apply a concept known as overloading. Okay, with the help of overloading, we can create duplicate methods inside the class case. Okay, what does it mean? You see, here the name of the method is same, but if these two methods differ in terms of parameters, then it is okay. For example, here I'll create one parameter case in A. You see, the error is gone, right? I can create a duplicate method when this method, which is a duplicate of this method, has a different parameters. You see, here zero parameters. Here zero parameters, whereas here one parameter is there, right? One parameter is there. That is the difference. Similarly, if I try to duplicate here public void method a int a like this, okay? Can I create this duplicate method? No, guys. Okay. You see. Here, this method A and this method A inside the same class have the same parameter, have the same number of parameters. Right here, also one parameter is there. Here, also one parameter is there. So, the duplication won't be possible. We cannot be able to duplicate the methods. Then, what if the type of this parameter is different? Here, one parameter is there. Here, also one parameter. But here, the type of the parameter is double. You see, the error is gone. Either the number of parameters should be different, or in order to create duplicate methods inside the same class, the number of parameters should be different, or the type of the parameter should be different. Now, if I create one more, I'll copy paste this one. So here, this is a duplicate method of this method because the name of the method is matching. Along with that, the number of parameters is matching and the type of the parameter is also matching. But if I create one more parameter here, 
like uh, int a comma double b you see the error is gone because here two parameters are there here this method only has one parameter whereas this method has two parameters that's the difference guys now i'll duplicate this method i'll copy paste this one and try to paste here now guys this is a duplicate method of this method because the name of the method is same the number of parameters is also same the number of parameters is also same and the type of the parameters is also same you see here two parameters here also two parameters name is same name is same and here first parameter is int type second parameter is double type here int and double are there what if guys what if i will change the order of these parameters okay like this then no problem if the order of the parameters is different that is also okay we can create duplicate methods just understand now guys okay we can apply this overloading concept where in java we can create duplicate methods inside the same class when that particular duplicate methods have different parameter count or different type of the parameters okay that parameters are of different data type or the order of the parameters is different okay three possibilities what are three possibilities guys either number of parameters should be different to have duplicate methods having the same name that the same class those two methods should differ in number of parameters as part of overloading concept those two methods should differ in terms of number of parameters or they should differ in the terms of type of parameters or the order of the parameters should be different order of this parameter should be different if this is so we can create duplicate methods inside the same class as part of overloading concept in java as part of overloading we can create duplicate methods in java only when the number of parameters type of parameters and order of parameters is different okay and this concept is called as overloading and here these are the methods so we can call them as method overloading as you see multiple methods having the same name are there method a method a method a like this okay so what if i do something guys here i will say i'll create uh, a new class guys okay i'll just name this class as mathematics class okay some some name i am giving mathematics and here i'll create a method guys now understand why overloading is required okay now you understood what is overloading right duplicate methods can be created inside the same class with the help of overloading but what is the purpose of overloading i'll explain okay so here in mathematics i'll create a method guys public void add okay i'll have two int a comma int b i'll say here i will say this out okay sum of values colon plus here here i'll calculate the sum guys int sum sum is equal to a plus b i'll say okay sum is equal to a plus b here i'll say a plus sum okay plus sum that's fine i'll create one more method which is a duplicate of this method i'll i'll copy paste this code otherwise to save the time here i'll add one more parameter int c now here i'll say in a plus b plus c now sum is same okay now one more method here i'll say int c comma int d here a plus b plus c plus d right now you see i created duplicate methods having same name inside the same class but they differ in the number of parameters here this particular add method has two parameters here this add method has three parameters this add method has four parameters and so on any number of i can create now i'll create one more class known as a demo demo3 class i'll right click and open this uh, on the right side and here inside this demo3 i'll create a main method inside this main method what i will do is i want to call this methods okay so i want to call this methods from this main method for that how to call this methods from the main method guys okay how to call this add methods from this main method i need to create an object right with with the object reference i can call this okay if this methods are inside a different class from a different class if you want to access the methods of another class so in the different class inside one of the method you need to create an object for this class from where the methods are available like this okay name of the class is mathematics new mathematics i have to create right new mathematics like this i need to create an object for this mathematics class i'll say m m is equal to 
okay object reference is m i have to declare this with the uh, again mathematics class name only now using this object reference m i can call this methods but when i say m dot you see i am getting three add methods not one one not one method i am not getting okay add having two parameters i am getting add having three parameters add having four parameters also getting in real time also guys in real time when you when you want when you want to have same name for multiple methods and those two three uh, those methods have to do different operations okay so this method does something this method does something this method does something but they should have the same name but they differ in the number of parameters okay like that okay this kind of situation may come in real time where with the same name of the method you want to perform different things then this kind of thing is required guys okay this kind of overloading concept is required so you see if i if i have a requirement where i have to add only two numbers i'll simply say add of 2 comma 3 which method will be called out of this three methods which method will be called the method having two parameters will be two parameters will be called okay this two will go to a and three will go to b okay so if i run this code you see the sum of values is 5 will be printed sum of uh, values 5 will be printed in the output that's good similarly guys similarly my requirement is not to add two values my requirement is add to is is to add three values in that case which method i have to call i cannot call the first method right it will the purpose of the first method is to only add two values but my purpose is to add three values this time okay m dot add of this time which method i have to which uh, overloaded method i have to call these are overloaded methods guys okay having the same name but different number of parameters and all okay based on the purpose if my requirement is to add three values i should not go with the first one i have to go with the second one okay So I'll say three comma two comma one. If I if I say three plus two plus one, that is six will be printed in the output. Okay, the sum of values is six will be printed here, guys. You see. And if my requirement is to add four values, then I should be selecting this overloaded method rather than this two overloaded method. Okay, in real time we'll get we need to have same method performing different stuff based on our requirement. In that cases, guys, we have to go with this overloaded concept. Guys, this is the what is the purpose of the overloading. Okay. So I'll give four comma two comma three comma nine. Okay. So if I do so, I'll get eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, eighteen should be printed in the output, guys. Okay. Four values should be added, and eighteen should be printed in the output. Sum of values is eighteen. You see, sum of values eighteen. So hope, guys, you understood what is the concept of overloading, right? So here I applied this overloading concept for method overloading, guys. Method overloading. Same thing I can apply for constructor overloading also. So what I will do here is instead of creating Duplicate methods. I'll be creating a duplicate constructor. Just see here. I'll remove all this stuff, and here inside this mathematics class, I'll create a uh, constructors like this. Okay, public constructors will not have any return type as I explained already, right? They will not have return type, and the name of the constructors will be same as the name of the class. Here I'll say this out. Okay, so I'll say uh, zero parameter constructor. Okay, so zero parameters. constructor having zero parameters will is called kind of okay if i say public mathematics same name you see constructors will have only one name right that is class name so here you see duplicate constructors are not allowed okay already defined you cannot create duplicate but if i give some value like this i can do it, okay here i'll say one parameter constructor just a demo i am giving guys i am not taking a real example public again mathematics here i'll say int a comma int b here this out two parameters now tell me guys how to call this constructors how to call this constructors constructors will be automatically called when i create an object right i don't have to explicitly call this constructors right when i create an object automatically this constructors will be called for example if i say new mathematics here which constructor will be called you see when i say new mathematics here which constructor will be called here during the object creation only the constructor will be called the constructor having zero parameters should be called if i run this code you see it will call the constructor having zero parameters zero parameters should be printed in the output you see i got the output as zero parameters what if i give some value here like some 9 if i give in this case which constructor will be called automatically the constructor having single parameter should be called During the object creation statement, okay, I can complete this also if you want. 
okay if you are confused i can write like this also this is also fine but this constructor calling statement is calling which constructor a constructor having one one parameter that is because here i'm passing one value so it will it will automatically call one parameterized a constructor having one parameter will be called you see one parameter got printed okay here similarly if i pass 9 comma 5 the constructor having two parameters should be called run this two parameters should be printed in this output you see two parameters that means this constructor got called so hope guys uh, overloading is not only for methods but also we can apply the overloading for constructors okay so in real time the purpose of the overloading is to okay based on your requirement if the same method has to perform different thing then we'll go with the overloading concept in java guys okay so fine then next one next concept is inheritance guys okay next concept is inheritance so we'll do one thing i'll close i'll delete all this stuff guys i'll delete all this stuff So freshly, I'll create a new class as part of inheritance, guys. First of all, inheritance. Okay, inheritance means what? I'll tell you. Okay. So thing is, inheritance means in real world there is a meaning for inheritance. Okay. Before you understand what is inheritance in Java, you just understand the meaning of inheritance. Inheritance in real world. What is the meaning of inheritance, guys? In real world, you see, if you go with uh, any families, okay. So who will be there, guys? Generally, we have parents. Okay, parent will be there. Parents will be there, right? Parents will be there. And to this pill, to this parents in a family, there will be some children, right? There will be a children, parent and child. This is what is the situation in real world, right? Parent will be there, and to that parent, child will be there. Child will be there, right? This is what is the real scenario, parent and child. So what this child will be inheriting from the parents lot of things he'll inherit okay so child may be inheriting some genes right some genes or he will also inherit some properties right right this parent would have already inherited from the grandparent right and the child will be inheriting from the parent and uh, the grandchild will be inheriting from this child and so on okay this is what is the process right in real world inheritance means the children will inherit the genes and properties from the parents right Genes and things from the parents. That's what is inheritance in real world. In Java also, this is possible, guys. Okay, where it is required, where to apply the inheritance, I'll explain. Okay, so guys, there is a situation where I need to create some classes. Okay, I'll create something here. Just see here. I'll say Java class. I'll say I'll create a thing known as cat. Okay, I'll say cat. And uh, here I'll say I'll create some some properties here. Okay. Uh, what are the properties? String type of animal type of animal is one property I'm creating, and one method also I'll create. Let's say one method I'll create that is public void each. Okay, each cat is okay. So here I'll say eat sys out. Okay, sys out cat is eating. Okay, like this I'll say. Now similarly, I'll create one more class. Dog. Okay, I'll create one more class similar to cat. I'll create one more class known as dog. Here, here in dog guys, I'll simply say string type of animal. Type of animal. Okay, and public void eat. Here also I'll say public void eat, and here inside the eat I'll simply say this out dog is eating dog is eating now one more class i'll create cat dog okay any other thing guys any other pets we have generally generally we have cats and dogs as a pets right so generally let's say parrot okay birds class so i'll say right click here open in right split i'll close this i'll just uh, Move this to the this side. So here, parrot is another one. Here also, I'll say string type of animal type of animal, and say public void each. Here I'll say sys out parrot is eating. Parrot is eating. So can you see any 
similarity between this cat dog and parrot guys do you see any similarity between this uh, i created three classes one is cat class dog class and another is parent class do you see any similarity between the properties of these three classes that is cat class dog class and parrot class yes right similarity is same properties are there for each and every class cat is having the same property dog is having the same properties that is type of animal i need parrot is also having the same properties that is type of animal i need that is the thing that's what is the same thing guys okay so instead of duplicating these properties in each and every class okay instead of for example in real world you have to create in real time you have to create these three classes having the same type of property instead of creating the properties like this guys what you can do is you can create one more class say i'll say animal class okay just say that it is an animal class i'll close all the other classes cat parrot and everything i'll close in animal class what i will do is i'll simply say string type of animal okay string type of animal and uh, public void each i'll say here i'll say this out animal is eating like this i'll create the properties inside the animal class and i'll make this animal class a parent class okay instead of creating this uh, same properties in multiple classes tomorrow 100 classes you have to create in all the 100 in all the 100 classes if you have to create the same properties you see lot of repetition you are doing to avoid that repetition in 100 classes or this three classes or whatever it is i'll create a parent class known as animal class okay so i'll create a class like this animal and i will make this animal class a parent of this cat dog and parrot okay so just see here i'll make this cat a parent instead of writing this i'll simply say cat extends cat extends animal i will say the keyword we have to use in inheritance as part of java is extends keyword here what happens with the extends keyword is i'm making this cat class a child of the animal class so when i make this class a child of this animal class all the properties of the animal class belong to the cat class you don't have to create them again similarly if you go to the dog i don't have to write these properties simply make this dog class a child of the animal class how to make the dog class as a child of the animal class simply say dog extends animal dog will become the child of the animal and all the properties that is variables and the methods of the animal class will be part of the dog class and similarly i'll open the parrot and here i'll say parrot extends extends is a keyword guys to make this parent or parrot also a child class of the animal class okay like this now this cat class dog class parrot class instead of creating the same duplicate code in all these three classes simply i am creating those kind of duplicate code inside the animal class and i am making the animal class a parent of these three classes this is what we have to do in real time in java guys okay whenever you see a set of classes having the same properties then instead of repeating the same properties in multiple classes create a parent class for those classes and remove the duplicated properties from the child classes and make these classes as child class of the animal classes okay the problem is solved now guys you see if i create one class here like this a demo class and if i open this on the right side here in the demo class if i say main okay main in here if i create an object for the parrot let's say parrot 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 is equal to new parrot like this if i create an object like this and using the object reference if i say parrot dot if i say dot you see type of animal is coming it is coming is there anything inside the parrot class no right parrot is inheriting this properties that is type of animal i need from the parent class known as animal okay type of animal is equal to bird okay and i'll say parrot dot each okay like this i can say now similarly if i create an object for the uh, cat let's say cat cat is equal to new cat like this if i create an object using this cat i can access the properties of the parent class that is type of animal is equal to okay it's a pet cat dot each okay similarly i can say dog 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 is equal to okay new dog and say dog dot type of animal is equal to is also pet and say dog dot each done you see 
Now, the main advantage you are getting with inheritance is you don't have to duplicate the code in multiple classes. If there is a situation in Java where you have to create multiple classes here, in all the multiple classes, same properties are there. Instead of having those multiple properties created again and again in multiple classes, create a parent class. Okay, create a class having that uh, properties which are duplicated in across multiple classes and make the other classes a child of the children of the this class so that you don't have to duplicate the properties everywhere. That's what is the main use of the inheritance case. Okay, inheritance is a mechanism in which one class acquires the properties of another class that is child class acquire, child classes will acquire the properties of the animal class. Here in this example, in I made the animal as a parent class of three classes that is cat, dog, and parrot class. Okay, I made the cat, dog, and parrot, uh, parrot as the child class of the animal class so that I don't have to repeatedly create the same properties in all these classes. Instead, I simply made the animal as a parent class. And in that animal class only, I kept the properties and uh, those properties are inherited by these three classes, okay, as per their requirements. You can see here we have to use extends keyword guys. This is a very important keyword. Okay. If you want to follow some inheritance, you have to use extends keyword guys. Okay. Extends keyword need to be used. Okay. So if you want to make a class, a child class or another class, you have to use extends keyword. And there is few more things I need to explain here, guys. For example, here, what if animal class is having these properties? Now the situation came where the child class says that I want to implement this in my in my own way. Okay. Here, instead of uh, if I run this, uh, if I run this guys, if I run this, first of all, if I run this, you see, we'll simply get output as animal is eating, animal is eating, animal is eating. Okay, I don't want like this. For example, when I say parrot dot eat, I want to get parrot is eating. When I say cat dot eat, I want to get cat is eating. If I say dog dog dot eat, dog is eating should come. In that case, what we can do, I'll tell you. Okay, that will come later, guys. Okay, so here. Here, what we can do here is so as part of explaining this overriding guys okay this is what the topic is overriding guys okay if i have to make that possible here if i say parrot dot eat animal is eating is coming if i say cat dot eat animal is eating is coming dog dot eat again animal is it it is coming because these child classes are inheriting child classes are successfully inheriting this parent class right parent class method parent class property but the problem is the version is kind of different right uh, it should not be coming as uh, animal is eating right so here, what I can do to overcome that problem is, so in the cat class, I'll create the same method that is there in the animal class, okay? In the cat class, I'll create the same method that is there in the parent class, okay? Can I create public void each with the same name? So is there any problem of creating like this? You see, duplicate method I'm creating in the child class, right? Already, there is a method in the parent class. Same method I'm creating in the child class. Is that okay? You see, already this cat class is inheriting this eat method from the parent class. This cat class is inheriting the eat method from the animal class, but again, I'm creating the eat method. What will happen? What will happen, guys? This concept is known as overriding, guys. Okay. So, this concept is known as overriding, where the method in the child class is said to override the method in the parent class. Okay. Here, what I will do is here, I'll say cat is eating. Here in the dog, also, I'll create the same method. Overriding method I'll create public void eat I will say here also I'll say this out dog is eating dog is eating here also inside the parrot I'll create an overridden method public void okay each same method which is there in the parent class even though this this method is being inherited by this child classes still I am creating the same method in the child classes and uh, giving a rep different representation or a different implementation for this method. Parrot is eating, okay, like this. Now in this case, if I run this code, what will happen is here, even though the child classes that is cat, dog, and parrot are inheriting the eat method from the parent class, but still these child classes have their own same implemented methods, okay? Same method is there also in the child classes, which method will be considered? When I create an object and call this method, parrot.eat, whether the method in the whether the method in the child class will be called or the same method that is inherited from the parent class will be called which method will be invoked here the
the method in the child class will be invoked guys because the method in the child class is there to override the method in the parent class you can also put an annotation here saying at the rate override also okay just to highlight it this method is overriding the method in this this is optional guys okay if you want to do you do otherwise it's okay this method is overriding or hiding this method is overriding the method in the parent class simple words okay this is optional guys whether you want to provide or not doesn't matter if you provide is okay just for your understanding okay just to have a knowledge that okay this method i have overridden from this that's why just to highlight it you can write this otherwise you see dog and parrot i didn't write that okay so run this code this time guys when you say parrot dot eat you will get parrot is eating when you say cat dot eat you will get cat is eating when you say dog dot eat you will get dog is eating this concept is called as overriding okay overriding is applied in inheritance okay without understanding inheritance you will not understand overriding guys so duplicate methods created in the same class is known as overloading okay duplicate methods created inside the same class by changing the number of parameters type of parameters and the order of parameters is called as overloading whereas duplicate methods created in the parent and child classes okay duplicate method duplicating the method in the parent class in the child classes is known as overriding guys simple terms okay duplicating the parent method in the child classes is known as overriding and when you try to create objects for the child classes the method that is there in the child classes will be called rather than the method in the parent class okay fine guys so when we create an object for subclass and call the overridden method the method in the subclass will be called that is overridden method will be called rather than the inherited method if there is no overridden method then only the inherited method from the parent class will be called when you create an object for the child class and call it okay so this concept is known as overriding guys okay if you are creating duplicate methods in the child classes okay in the child classes the methods in the child classes are said to override the methods in the parent class or if you are creating the duplicate methods inside the same class itself the methods in the same class are said to overload the methods other methods in the same class okay so with this guys we are done with all the topics that i have to explain okay that is methods variables classes objects constructors this keyword overloading inheritance overriding okay all the things i have explained so so that's all for this session guys see you in the next video session Thank you and bye.